HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Committee hosted Dr. Ann Matina at the Historical Society to talk about the history of mill workers in Hopkinton. And last week it was marathon mania throughout Hopkinton. We'll show you footage of the Hopkinton Middle School 2.62 Desire to Inspire Run and Walk and also a glimpse of the festivities at Elmwood School as the John Hancock Scholars and Stars program brought some of the elite Kenyan runners to the school. But first, here are the results from a successful 2015 Boston Marathon. In the 2015 Boston Marathon, Tatiana McFadden of Maryland won the women's wheelchair division. It was her third Boston Marathon victory she finished at a time of 2.25.39. In the men's wheelchair division, Marcel Hugues of Switzerland, aka the Swiss Bullet, zoomed through the marathon course at a time of 1.52.53. Hugues beat the second place finisher by nearly six and a half minutes to win his first Boston Marathon. Kenya's Carolyn Rodich won the women's division of the 2015 Boston Marathon. It was her first Boston Marathon victory. Rodich finished four seconds ahead of the second place finisher. Carolyn finished at 2.24.55. On the men's side, Eliza De Sisa of Ethiopia took home the crown. It was his second win in the Boston Marathon. De Sisa won in 2013 and famously gave his medal back in honor of the victims of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings, DeCisa finished with a time of 209.17. A couple other marathon notes. Last year's winner, American Meb Kaflesgi, finished 8th at a time of 212.42. Kenyan Parliament member and 2012 Boston Marathon winner, Wesley Career finished 5th at a time of 210.49. And Rick Hoyt, once again crossed the finish line with the help of Methuen native and family friend Brian Lyons who took over for Dick Hoyt in pushing Rick after Dick retired from marathons this year. Each year the Boston Marathon brings stories that motivate and inspire. Hopkinton Middle School has used the marathon to create the Desire to Inspire program which encourages students to pursue their goals and never give up on their dreams. As part of the Desire to Inspire program, HMS held their annual Desire to Inspire 2.62 mile run and walk. Hundreds of students gathered from Hopkinton Middle School for the annual 2.62 mile run or walk as part of the Desire to Inspire program. Here is a look at some of the sights and sounds of a fun filled day. Another uh, successful year at the track for the 2.62 Desire to Inspire Run and Walk. Uh, what did you think about the event this year? Uh, the event was was awesome. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a it's a true pleasure, um, especially in, in my role. I have the opportunity to. Uh, watch the teachers uh, do all the planning and they come to me with their idea as they did last year which was the, the first year that we ran it and um, and there, were, there was a lot of logistics involved in it and a lot of planning and um, they put a ton of work into this and to, to see it all come together um, and just see um, you know the special moments for me are 
you know, the first uh, student that, that, that runs across the finish, lo finish line is an amazing accomplishment, but there's so many other accomplishments along the way. So, some of the students who, um, you know, who walked and, and seeing them be able to cross the line, and, and it's a major accomplishment for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. So um, that makes all of the time and effort uh, I think on the part of the teachers, um, uh, all worth it to, just to see that. I mean, we have, um, as I know, uh, Mary Vera talked to you about uh, the whole child, and uh, we, we academics are, play a, obviously num the number one role. That's why we're here, um, but we focus on the whole child as well. And I think this is a really special moment that brings uh, our entire middle school community together. So I'm, I'm thrilled. And the, and added on top of that, the fact that. Um, this year we were able to do it on the first day that we had it planned as opposed to last year which wound up being I think a uh, total of four different dates that we tried to pull this off so it's, it's exciting. Especially with the weather that's been this year. Uh, it seems all the students really come together for this event, they're cheering each other on, it's just a really great atmosphere. This seems to be something that the students look forward to every year. It is, I think it's, it's, a, it's a really special moment. It's unlike any um, school or school event that I've ever been a part of before. There's a, there's a real um, there's a, it's just a real community here in Hopkinton and Hopkinton Middle School. I mean, you know, this, this isn't possible without um, all the teachers coming up with this idea originally, the support that we're given from the 26.2 Foundation, uh, the HPTA, um, countless others that have that come, you know, we have parents, volunteers that uh, help Officer Powers and the police officers, the maintenance uh, crew, the custodians all make this possible and, and not a lot of people see all that stuff but it would be impossible without without everybody doing that and you know as I said it would you know it's it's um, from the first student to cross the finish line to the last student to cross the finish line as you said it's it's everybody rallying and everybody I mean there was just as many cheers uh, or there was just a, a, such a, a pronouncement of, of joy for the student who was the last person to cross the finish line as there was for for the first person to cross so that's exciting and I think that's um, that's the that to me is the biggest takeaway is how, how much um, this school this community uh, supports one another and and, uh, and and pulls together absolutely the excitement was just here all throughout uh, from the first to the last but uh, I do want to talk about the first place finisher, Johnny. Uh, very fast, uh, crossed the finish line, I believe, around 17 minutes. And uh, you had uh, Meb Kaflegzi, the 2014 Boston Marathon winner at the middle school recently. And uh, Johnny could challenge Meb's uh, 5K time in his middle school days. Yeah, he definitely. Yeah, Johnny is, Johnny is impressive. It's going to be awesome to watch um, Johnny's uh, you know, high school career and his career beyond high school. I, I think he's got a really exciting and promising future. There's no question about it. He's he's un unbelievable. Uh, and we were we were um, talking about who was going to finish in first. And Johnny's always somebody that we mention. Um, but he 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 had quite a bit of distance between him and and, and the second place uh, uh, in his runner up. Yeah. Yeah, quite unbelievable speed. But uh, the weather today, a little bit cloudy, a little bit gloomy, some moisture in the air, but no rain. Uh, it's not bad conditions. The temperature is right. Uh, what did you think about the conditions out here today? Yeah, I mean, we talked. We talked throughout the week when we looked at the forecast, and uh, we kept monitoring it. Um, my instinct was to, to go with it, and I talked to Miss Pinto, who, as you know, is, is, is really the, 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 the person who leads the, 20, uh, excuse me, the, the uh, Desire to Inspire Committee, and, um, and we both felt with what the forecast uh, was calling for um, that, that those are fine conditions, and, and, you know, and now that it's all behind us and we were able to complete it, I think, I think it was fine. I, I, I'm happy that we did it on this day. It was a little bit of mist but nothing that you know nothing too difficult or, or um, anything that we had to worry about so it was good all right well another great year another great event and uh, I'm sure it'll be the same next year yeah and we and we thank you guys for being here I think it's really uh, a really nice moment um, for you to be here and be able to capture this and um, to be able to see the excitement that the kids have and and, uh, and I and I thank H cam and I thank you for 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 supporting us in this as well well it's a great program we certainly love covering it thank you very much You're welcome thank you all right, we have a few more coming in. We're now at 50 minutes. All right, then. 
coming up next on HCAM News, Dr. Ann Matina talked about the history of mill workers in Hopkinton. As part of the 300th anniversary celebration, we will head to Elmwood School as the students got to meet some elite Kenyan runners during their annual visit. And Courtney will let you know everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. Hello, I am Marie Smith and I am the chairperson of the Hopkinton Women's Club Community Register and Telephone Directory. We hope you have found our little book to be a helpful resource in the past. We are beginning work on the 2016 edition and we need your help. Every household in Hopkinton receives one of these for free and we want to make sure you are included. Our residential listings are based on the information we get from Verizon. If you have switched to a different provider, such as Comcast, we may not have your number. If you do not have a landline, we definitely won't have your number. Or maybe you prefer your cell number in our directory. So please take a minute and help us make the directory accurate and useful for everybody. Take a look at the Hopkinton phone book that you have and make any corrections in it. Or if you are new to town, please send us an email before June 30th. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton has a long history of industry. For example, the Hopkinton economy previously thrived off the boot and shoe industry. Hopkinton was also once a center for cotton cloth making. There is a long history of factories and production lines and as part of the Hopkinton 300th anniversary celebration, Stonehill College professor and researcher Dr. Ann Matina talked at the Hopkinton Historical society about mill workers at the turn of the century with this you know wave of strikes across Massachusetts where was Hopkinton in all of this well what I came to find out was that this uh, Hopkinton's industrial age was basically over by 1912 not completely not completely, but all the uh, shoe and boot mills were gone by that particular time. There were only a few uh, factories left in town uh, by 1912. So this, as I said, intrigued me and I started to get interested in, well, what was life like prior to uh, the, the decline of the boot factories in Hopkinton? All right, uh, so first off, can you tell us uh, what got you into this research? Well, I've always been interested in women and work, and for my doctoral dissertation a very long time ago, I, my research was on the Lowell Female Labor Reform Association, which were women in Lowell in the 1840s who were working for a 10-hour workday. This was long before suffrage, long before women had any political power at all. And these women actually uh, petitioned and marched and spoke before the legislature trying to get a 10-hour workday enacted. What other towns have you uh, done this research in? Is it primarily in Hopkinton or is it all over? I know you said you did a lot of research in Lowell. Uh, is it throughout Massachusetts? Basically throughout Massachusetts. So Lowell, Lawrence, um, also Clinton, Barry, uh, Milford, um, Hopedale. There were factories all over Massachusetts at one time or another. I've also done a lot of research in western Massachusetts on Irish immigrants in the paper mills and the textile mills out there. Now what towns would you say have the most history as, as far as the factories and the industry? Well, actually, it's kind of interesting because at one time or another, they all had mills. They all had factories. We generally think now of the big cities like Lawrence and Lowell and New Bedford and Fall River. Uh, Brockton was a major shoe center as well. Uh, just about every town in Massachusetts had industry at one time or another. Now, how long does it take you to research a specific town? Depends on what the topic is. I don't think your research is ever done. I, as I said, I published a, a book chapter on the Lawrence strike a few years ago, and I'm still finding out more about it, even after I finished my work. 
I'm uh, a professor at Stonehill College, and if they go on Stonehill College website, they can find my resume there, and it lists all my articles and publications and things like that. Be sure to look out for the full edition of Dr. Ann Matina's presentation airing on a special edition of HCAM News Focus. For the past few years, John Hancock has brought elite Kenyan runners to Elmwood School as part of the Scholars and Stars program. This year, 2012 Boston Marathon winner Wesley Career and the eventual 2015 winner on the women's side, Carolyn Rodich, were in attendance among others. Here is a look at the many festivities that occurred throughout the day. As part of the Scholars and Stars program, some of the elite Kenyan runners visited Elmwood School. The athletes got to check out some artwork and dances relating to the Kenyan culture the students worked on. The annual event is always one of the favorite days of the year for a lot of the students. It's awesome! Oh, oh my god, it's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Everybody says I'm lucky because I have him. We did good. Yeah, it's really cool because they're coming here and the, like they're champions of the most American. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, so happy to see uh, kids in school. Also, they learn more about us because they will be a good uh, role model. It's very nice because uh, they are learning. It's, uh, it means they are learning all about uh, things which is in their world. Yeah, yeah, right. getting there. Now, uh, how's, the, uh, how's the uh, marathon training going? Are you ready for the big day? Yeah, actually, the training is going well. Right, I'm preparing one for Monday. And sure. I think the weather will be good the way, the way we live in Kenya. Here's my book about my daughter. That's my daughter. That's me. That's my mom. That's my dad. That's my wife and my family. So my. My wife wrote this about the different lives between uh, Canada and Kenya. So I'm glad these kids are learning about it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So your family is from Canada? Yeah, my wife is from Canada. And, uh, yeah. I gotta ask, how'd you two meet? We met in Kentucky, Lovo, Kentucky. I came from Kenya to go to Lovo under athletic scholarship, and she came from Canada, she came to Lovo. And at the scholarship, so we met in college. Oh, wow! Mm. Now, uh, how do you like coming here to Elmwood? No, it's so fun. It's so much fun to just see these kids put so much uh, to get these things uh, ready. It's just amazing. They, they have learned so much about Kenya. They know more about Kenya than even some of us. So it's just amazing to to see the love and the welcome that these kids uh, give us. Makes us feel at home in Boston. How do you like all the artworks around here today? It's pretty neat, it's pretty neat. Some of this stuff, like all of these things are just traditional. Uh, you know, they're like, you know, some things that, you know, they, they have been used for so long in the past. And to come here and see these kids learning about them, uh, it's just amazing. amazing. He is an amazing individual. His brother was bitten by a black mamba snake could not get to a hospital in time, and his brother died. He vowed to do something about it and raised the money to build a small hospital in his area of the country so that would never happen to anybody else. He won the 2012 Boston Marathon. How about a great jumbo, Wesley Career? You will have chosen any other country to celebrate this day, but you chose us, and for us, we are very much honored. I am so honored personally today because a couple of years today, at this particular time in 2012, on the 16th of April, 
I was celebrating my victory as the Boston Marathon champion. And today, I'm here to celebrate with you again that day for you guys making us feel like champion. So I'm so thankful for that. And I would like to take this opportunity as a member of Parliament of Kenya, as a leader of Kenya, and as a future president of Kenya, I would like to welcome you. I would like to take this first opportunity to welcome each and everybody here today to Kenya. If you feel like coming to visit Kenya, please come and see the country that you have displayed out there. See the people that you have learned their language. See the people that you have learned so much about and enjoy with them the same way you enjoy with us today. Did you have a good time uh, here at Elmwood today? Sure, I did. Yeah, it was a lot of fun seeing kids know a lot about Kenya, so yep. What did you think about uh, all the studying of the Kenyan culture and artwork they did today? I think they put a lot of work to do that because I don't know if I know all of it, but that's really um, amazing things to see them doing that, all, the, all of those. How did the uh, marathon training go? Are you ready for the big day? I'm here, so I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. It's great to be here in Hopkinton with everybody and you can hear all the excitement of these 469 students here at Elmwood. And on cue they cheer. But I want to tell everybody in Hopkinton what we're learning from studies. University of Illinois has done it. Duke University has done a study as well. And it shows that running and rapid walking if you're an adult improves the memory and focus of our brains. And academically I can tell you from studies that I've done that the memory and focus part of the brain that's approved in track and field helps the students so much that cross country and track and field in general are the best academic sports teams in high school and in college. So you parents out there, it helps you in many ways and if you've got a very good student who runs, you don't have to go to college on scholarship, but it will help. When you apply for college, make sure on your admissions documents or in your interviews that you tell the, uh, the admissions person you're speaking with that you ran track for three years, four years, whatever it is, and that you worked at it for 12 months or however long you trained and how much you improved. They love to see that discipline in allowing students into their college. So hopefully this information helps all of you. It was a fantastic marathon season, and you can catch many of the events leading up to the marathon in their entirety coming soon on HCAM. For more information about the wide array of programs coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Monday, April 27th at 11 a.m., we'll have a new point of order discussing the proposed zoning changes at Legacy Farms. This article would uh, raise the cap on the number of dwelling units can be on the property uh, by 180, and these would be age-restricted, over 55 units. In a new Stage 3250 at 8 p.m., local poet Cheryl Peralt shares her story of finding her love of poetry. There was no room for poetry. There was no room for writing. I forgot about it, actually. And uh, that is really ironic now, I think. But I know that it was still with me. Those early seeds from childhood, from my teachers who influenced me, were with me all that time. On Tuesday, April 28th at 11 a.m., learn the planning board's opinions of the proposed town meeting articles on the first of a two-part edition of Point of Order. The uh, proposed change allows a special permit process for um, a property owner to have parking between a principal building and the street on one of the side streets of downtown. At 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting airs live on HCAM TV, and the Elementary School Building Committee meeting airs live on HCAM Ed. On Wednesday, April 29th at 11 a.m., the discussion continues on the Planning Board's opinions of the town meeting articles on point of order. There's this definition of indoor recreation that would be developed and it would apply wherever this use is allowed. And what they'd like to do 
is to allow it by special permit in the Industrial B District. At 11.30 a.m., we show you the 2015 Boston Marathon Wreath Ceremony on a new HCAM News Focus. At 7 p.m., learn about the different candidates running for election this year on Meet the Candidates Night, live on HCAM TV. You can email questions in ahead of time to live at hcam.tv or call in during the program to have your questions answered live on the air. On a new studio session live on Thursday, April 30th at 4.30 p.m., Susan Levine returns to the studio to perform her original songs. Give me 10 miles down this road Give me 10 feet through your door Get me 10 years past my last goodbye And I'll stop running at 7 p.m., learn about the different town meeting articles for 2015 in Know Your Vote, live on HCAM TV. You can also email or call with questions during the program. On Sunday, May 3rd at 10 a.m., the planning board and meeting uh, from April 27th will stuff. air. On HCAM Ed, the Hopkinton Middle School and High School jazz bands perform in Jazz Night. Would you like to be added to the HCAM Insider mailing list to receive this information every week? If so, just send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. If you do receive it, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well. See you.